Um, now I'd like to turn to, uh, to Greg Cassidy. And Greg is going to, uh, to start out uh, the Build Along program that we've talked about previously. Uh, he and uh, Chris Gorse of uh, Connor Wingo have gotten together and Chris offered his kit. Greg is gonna build it. And what you'll hear about tonight is the introduction uh, for this uh, Build Along from Greg and uh, Chris. And you'll find out about the tools and what you need to have in order to, uh, to build it uh, with uh, uh, Greg as he starts it. So Greg, I will turn it over to you and Chris. Sir. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'll go ahead and do my presentation first. Uh, if Chris wants to come on afterwards and tell people how to order the kit, uh, he can do that. Um, let me start my share. <laughs> Um, and I'm not quite the orator that most of the other people are here, so I'm going to be following a script. Uh, welcome to the New Tracks Build Along. This is the Gray Street House, the company house version. Uh, I'm Greg Cassidy. I'll be covering the construction of the kit. This will be done in slideshow format. I'm always taking pictures as I go. I'll always have some. In I'll also have some info from Jeff about the lighting supplies at the end. Tonight, we'll go over the tools and supplies that I'll be using. Not all of them are needed, but most are useful for this and for any other wood kits. First is the glues I'll be using. I use different glues for different applications. These are common glues that many modelers will have laying around. At some point, you'll need to glue plastics together. I like to use the extra thin for gluing acetate into plastic window frames. Glues for wood and paper. There's a large variety out there and many modelers have their favorites. I like to think in terms of the viscosity of the glue I'm gonna be using for the application I need it for. The tacky glue is thicker and stronger glue that I use for walls and strong joints. The Elmer's glue all is versatile for gluing a variety of materials together and the canopy glue is very thin and I like to use it in applications where I don't need a thick glue and having it dry clear may help. The super glues are versatile for gluing a variety of materials together. I personally like the Loctite for their dispenser bottles and I use both the liquid and the gel depending on what I'm attaching. And I wanna point out some value pack super glue you can find on Amazon. At roughly $7 a package, you don't need to worry about it if you end up wasting any because you couldn't get the last drop out of the tube. Next, we'll cover the tools I'll be using. All modelers have their favorite tools to use. These are what are usually out on my workbench all the time. You wanna use a hobby or exacto knife. Make sure you have a few spare blades and that you're starting with the sharp one. I find tweezers useful for holding small pieces of wood when I'm applying glue to them and for other delicate tasks. Even with having a hobby knife, I find single edge razor blades to be useful and I always have two next to my workbench. I'll start with a sharp one and once it's used a fair bit, I'll mark it as being dull and get out a new sharp one. You'll always find lots of uses for a sharp pencil for marking where to cut wood and making nail holes and signs. These are my most used squares. You'll find them especially useful. I also like having an angle guided hand. And what I think is one of the most important and cost effective tools is a toothpick. I use it all the time for applying glue and removing glue that's been squeezed out of a joint. This is a variety of sanders, shapers, and measuring tools. Having a variety of sanding sticks is almost essential. You can get by with sandpaper, but it's harder to get straight edges using that. 
Files can also be handy and in some cases can take the place of sanding sticks. They're coarser and will remove more wood than a sanding stick will. You'll want a, some form of a ruler or straight edge. They have a variety of uses from measuring items to giving you a straight edge to cut along. I like to have a scale ruler as well as ones that measure in inches and millimeters. I've ended up using a variety of different clamps. In some cases, you can get by with rubber bands or bracing items together with one, two, three blocks. But there are some cases where a clamp is really the best tool to use. As far as paints go, the sky's the limit in terms of what's available out there. I like to have a variety of craftsman style paints that you can get at art stores like Michael's and modeling paints such as Vallejo that you can get at hobby shops. There'll also be uses for rattle can spray paints. Depending on what you're going to be using them for, you can go with the large cans from a hardware store or modeling spray paints from a hobby shop. For paint application, I have a variety of brushes. These are my favorites that I use most often. And I'll usually just use a coffee can lid as my palette. Have some warm water nearby to wash out your brush and I do like using a brush cleaner to help keep my brushes in good shape. A paint spray booth isn't necessary, but odds are at some point you'll be using some spray paints, so you want somewhere where we can spray safely and cleanly. You can go outdoors, but then you're subject to the weather. I built this spray booth out of plywood with a fan attached to the back of it that ducks outside. Here I'm going to show some optional tools and supplies that I use but aren't necessary for this build. Some type of magnifier or optivizer. Depending on your eyesight, this may or may not be a necessity. For me, it absolutely is. I tend to use a variety of chalks and pigments for weathering my models, both during the construction and once they're completed. You can pick up chalks at many modeling stores but I really like to use artist grade pigments. They come in powdered form. You can get these from art supply houses and they're a great value. And you wanna have a variety of brushes for application as well. And while it's not necessary, I find having a variety of different strip woods on hand to be useful, especially if you want to do any modifying or scratch building. Now, for the O-scale builders for this build along, you'll have to create the porch and foundation that doesn't come with the O-scale kit. A couple of supplies that you will need on hand for that are some clapboard siding for the porch roof sides and some material to cover the foundation with if you don't wanna leave it as wood. You'll also need to have a few sizes of strip wood on hand. The eight by eight can be used for the porch posts the two by six for the porch and back step flooring, and nine by nine or larger for the actual foundation. Also some stairs and stringers if you don't want to make your own. Now these are the lighting supplies that Jeff suggests would be useful if you want to include light in the house. In the upcoming build episodes, he will cover his techniques for adding that. What you have here is wire of 28 to 38 gauge, roughly four to six feet. Some white LEDs, three millimeter, warm, sunny, or any white. You can use as many as you want. Jeff will be using two. Resistors at 680 ohms for a quarter watt for 12 volt power, or 220 ohms quarter watt for five volt power. And you'll want some thin card stock or an old box to enclose the light. Uh, I will put all of these websites in the chat window after my presentation. That's it for the tools and supplies. If anybody has any questions. Uh, uh, Greg, go back a minute uh, to the O scale version. Uh-huh. Uh, where would people go to get the uh, foundation uh, covering that you talk about? And also, where would they go to get the uh, uh, stairs uh, that you mentioned? All right, the uh, foundation covering, uh, there's a variety of different materials out there that either look like brick or can look like rock work 
what I happen to have in O-Scale is from Plastruct. You can find it at any hobby shop that uh, carries wood and evergreen and Plastruct siding. Um, as far as the clapboard siding, you should be able to find that uh, again at any hobby shop uh, that carries any of this type of wooden siding. Uh, or you can search online. There's a variety of websites that sell this. Uh, I tend to order it from a hobby shop that's up the road from me. Uh, but uh, you have your large hobby places like uh, Hobby Link and Mount Albert and some other places where you can get this siding from. Uh, and, and the same thing with the strip wood here and the steps and stringers. Uh, you should be able to find strip wood at any hobby shop that carries this kind of wood product. The stringers and steps, the O scale ones that I have came from Steve Milley at rail scale models. Uh, but almost any company that sells uh, O scale uh, craftsman kits uh, probably offers some form of steps or stringers, uh, something like that. I know there's a three or four different model manufacturers that offer that in O-Scale. Thank you. Greg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. You, you might also consider folks if you're doing uh, O-Scale or if you want stone instead of brick or whatever, uh, textures and, and print it on your inkjet printer, which you then need to overlay with Krylon. I know Clever Models has them and I'm sure there's other people and there's probably free websites that have brick textures or rock textures or whatever you want to use. And of course you can scale that on your computer to whatever you want. Yep. Thank you, TC. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to end my share. Okay, Greg, thank you so much. Um, uh, Chris, uh, I'm... I'm I'd like for you to comment a little bit about uh, ordering the kits and that kind of thing. And because uh, Greg is going to actually start the build the 3rd of March on our show, the 3rd of March. So you have between now and then to uh, get your kit ordered and uh, get it in the mail. So I'll turn this over to Chris if you'd like to talk about ordering and so forth for a minute. All right. I just put the uh, email or the uh, website address in there for ordering it. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, we'll go over this real quick here. Maybe if this computer cooperates, there we go. Okay, so uh, as we all are aware now, this is a, the build along is a collaborative build. Um, we're going to start out with uh, the Gray Street House, and then uh, we're going to move on to other projects after that. Uh, if you want to order this kit, um, the primary version that we're going over is the HO scale version. Uh, and uh, it's been dubbed the company house version um, because it, it does strongly resemble a company house that you would see in, in coal country. Uh, the, uh, the build begins March 3rd at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Greg is heading it up. And uh, Jeff Bunza is going to chime in from time to time and uh, help us a little bit should we uh, decide to, to add some light to it. Uh, I th thought that was a great addition. Um, this uh, HO scale version includes a foundation, a front porch, a back step, and it's got tar paper roofing. Um, and uh, as uh, mentioned a little bit earlier, it is also available in O scale. However, um, when I came up with the, with the company house version, um, I wasn't expecting uh, the O scale guys to, to take so much interest. So I apologize for that, but um, it's going to turn out to be a little bit of a scratch building project for the O scale guys. So uh, hopefully that's a, uh, a happy accident. Um, so this is basically what we're going to, what we're going over is the, uh, we're going to go through the preparation for first. Uh, Greg already talked about your tools and your glues. Um, and then we're going to head into uh some uh, planning your design elements for it, uh, what you want to do with it, some lighting options, and uh, a neat little topic that applies very well with this house is the research. 
because I actually um, looked at houses in Chesapeake City, Maryland, and uh, there are a ton of these houses. Not one of them looks anywhere near as small as this one does because the, the footprint on it is, it, I think what they did is they taxed by the width of the street that you took up. And so basically you might have a house that's 10 feet wide and it's huge in the back. Um, so that was to keep the taxes down. But anyway, um, so we'll go over that uh, and some neat things that have happened with those houses in Chesapeake City. Gives you, give you a bunch of different ideas of what you could do with the kit. Uh, week, two, week two will be bracing, um, where uh, we're going to talk about bracing the walls and then uh, also some considerations for LED and wire placement. Week three, uh, Greg's going to head right into painting, talk about the roofing, the walls, painting your doors, windows, strip wood, and um, you're going to have to uh, do a little bit of sealing to prevent light leakage so that this one light, let's, let's say you put one light in there, uh, you don't want it to glow like the sun. And uh, so they're going to show you a few tips and techniques to, uh, to prevent that from happening. Uh, week four will be the main assembly, installing the doors and windows, um, uh, assembling the building itself, and then uh, putting the porch roof on or putting porch roof together, I should say. Um, installing those lighting options and um, doing some window dressings for lighting effects. And that's actually another category that I, I kind of um, like because different, different window positions kind of are a sign of life. Um, so that we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And then the last week will be uh, roofing and finishing touches. Uh, gonna fit the roof on, um, do, the, do the, uh, the roofing itself. Um, powering the lights and then uh, finishing touches, little odds and ends here and there that need to be taken care of. So um, anyway, um, we've got uh, two different versions, the HO scale and the O scale version. Uh, you need to order now. Um, it looks like maybe in the last couple of days, the post office is starting to catch up. Um, but still, if you want to get uh, this kit and have it in time to uh, – to uh, join us on the build, um, please get that order in as soon as you can to uh, conowingomodels.com and um, we'll begin our uh, build on March the 3rd. Fantastic. Thank you so very much, Chris and Greg. I really do appreciate it. Uh, let me thank you.